Bradford, Yorkshire, one of the UK's most deprived cities. The fight to earn a living wage here is as tough as anywhere. I want to just get a normal routine and live a normal life with a job. But there is one woman who wants to fight back. Jane Vincent set up her own recruitment agency. We need to give back to our local community. And with the help of her team, Hello! she wants to get people back into work. Sell yourself. Yes, please. Are you free? Getting the locals a job isn't easy. You'd need to stop talking in your language. I've had a medical secretary that's smelled of weed. Are you free to start today? I have had no sleep in three days. <laughs> The world of recruitment can be unpredictable. If you can be any kitchen appliance, what would you be and why? Really? <laughs> Frustrating. I'm crying again. Well, he should do his job properly, Carla. Keep lazy eyes. Sometimes impossible. Do you think I'm drunk? There's no way you can work. No way. I, I, I can smell it on you. But with Jane and her team giving it their all... We've got a job! GT got offered. Yay! I'm so happy I found the all. <laughs> There's hope for everyone. What the hell with that? <laughs> I am very determined. Very determined. <laughs> Single mother of one, Jane Vincent, is one of Bradford's leading businessmen. I've always been what I'd call a grafter. At 13, my dad said, if you want money, you've got to go out and earn it. But you see, but I'm, I've always worked very, very hard, and I'm trying to instill that in my little girl now, that you don't get anything for nothing, you've got to work for it. I'll see you tonight about quarter to 11. Okay. I'll keep my phone on and I'll ring you. Thank you. All right, darling, love you. Bye. Bye, nice day. She set up her recruitment agency five years ago. Morning. With a view to helping the people of Bradford get back into work. My recruitment agent is my baby. I've got an 11-year-old and I've got candelita people. <laughs> it's it's everything. It's my livelihood. OK, from um, a sales perspective, I know we've all been really, really busy. We've been covering holidays and things. What I'm really concerned about is we don't let it slip. Every day we've got to try and convince clients that we're the agents to use, not the other 50, you know, round the corner. So it's a constant battle to win new business, attract new candidates, and keep on top of your game. I've got a visit with the facilities director at Bradford City uh -huh. to talk to them about their recruitment. Will that be security based? If they're like on the I don't, I don't know yet. Until I go and establish exactly what it is he needs. Well, that could uh, be a good one. It could be an excellent one. New business is really important. For us to be able to grow, to sustain ourselves, we need to keep what we've got and we need to develop and attract new clients to come and work with us. What I'm really looking forward to talking to you about is, is yeah. actually Matt's Day staff. All right. So talk to me about what you'd expect them to do on, on sort of the four hour shift. They need to be able to uh, react to safety issues. Okay. Uh, and then there is a smaller element which is dealing with people who can be a bit difficult at times. From our point of view, you're, you're an ideal client because, you know, it's football, people want to do the job, it's yep. exciting. So what would influence you to give us a try? I think we, we need to be looking at you know, competitive rates, and it can be done on, on a trial period to see what staff you could get for us. We'll do it as cheap as we possibly can for you, just because we'd love to work for you. No, you're talking but we've, my got to make, we've got to make a little bit of profit. <laughs> as well as the fight for new business. Have you been drinking? Yes, I know. So I don't want to smell no alcohol. No. Okay. No. The pressure's on to keep finding the right people for the right jobs. Your name's Eve. 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 Like Christmas Eve. We'll call you Barry. <laughs> and while Jane's ex-husband Paul is still finding his feet... Nice to meet you. Congratulations. The agency still needs to make money as profits are down. No one wants a job. I don't understand. I need you to go into work tonight, please. Do I have your completely updated CV? The burden of getting the company's fortunes back on track lies with Rachel and Carlos. Every month, it's what we're going to do. How much are you bringing in? How much are you bringing in? How much are the temps doing? What's Rachel doing? So it's hard. He had a job that was temp to perm, and now he's lost it, and I'm going to replace him. Pressure's there straight away because I need that booking filled as, as soon as possible and with the right person as well. And if you don't fill it, you lose the booking, someone else gets it. I'm really honestly 
gonna go, and um, my head's gonna blow up now, honestly. Carlos has been called by a regular client who wants him to find them a delivery driver. I need someone as soon as possible. Thank you, bye, bye. It's unsociable hours, and Carlos is struggling to find the right candidate. Carlos, have you got me that? Boss Jane has been listening in and has a suggestion. I've got a guy coming in in a minute. Yeah. All he wants is a part-time job. He just wants something to help contribute towards his pension. He's a great guy, 65. It's a physical job, so I'll need to see what he's like. I, I just think you should see him when, with no, an open I'll mind. Yeah, I'll see him. It's All right, problem. thank yeah. you. 65-year-old Robert recently left his well-paid sales job. Hello. Are you Robert? I am, yeah. Hi, Robert. I'm Carlos. Hi. And despite entering retirement age, he still needs to keep working. Do you want a drink, Robert? Just add one, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell me a bit about how you've come to this uh, come to us and, and what you want to do. OK, OK. Well, I worked for a company for 26 years, went down the tubes, took part of my pension with it, so I do need to supplement my income uh, for a while. When was the last time you had an interview? Proper interview. 98, when I last had a proper interview. All right. Up-to-date interviews now, they'll throw you a question and you'll sit there wondering... Why did they ask why, that? Why are you asking me this? If I was to say to you, um, and it's nothing to do with the work, but if you were an animal, what would you choose? <laughs> this, this gets asked for an interview. And if your reaction is that... <laughs> so it, it's that what kind of... What would you choose? What would you choose? I haven't a clue. <laughs> good, good answers for that are ants and lions. Lions work as a pack, a team. It's all about team, 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 team. I mean, they've asked what flavour... Packet of crisps would you be? Cheese, love you. Well, this is it, and then they ask you why. I've no worries at all about interviews. Part of my job is to talk to uh, strangers, customers, people I've never met. I do have a position in mind, right. but it is part time. Well, Probably awesome. three days a week. Ideal. I I'm happy to put you forward. Uh, and yeah. I wasn't at first. You I'm wasn't. Being honest with you. Right. So I've convinced you. <laughs> He is somebody who's grafted all his life and then because of something out of his control, he's now having to continue to work. But he's still got lots of enthusiasm about him. And to me, he's my perfect candidate. Thanks again, Take cheers. Care. Jane has swung it for Robert. Now, he just has to get through the interview process. You've just arrived today. Yes. I'll give you some milk. Sorry. But when are you going to try and get a job or something? What shift are you available to work? Uh, morning shift. What would you be your ideal job? Top Gear, Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> Despite plenty of people looking for work at the agency. All right, thanks, mate. Cheers, bye. Carlos is struggling to find anyone who's willing to be a steward at the next Bradford City match. The Bradford City one, it, it's a new one, obviously, to us, but it, it's quite difficult. We've put an ad out, we've not had a massive surge for it. The pressure's on because he needs to find 20 people by the weekend. The people I've been speaking to about this job, they're not interested in it if it's only for five hours per week. You go to university, students at university, for like five years, it would bite our hand off to do a job working on a Saturday because they're at uni all week and stuff. All he wants is good customer service. Yeah, they, you won't want just kids on, on, on a door. Uh, doing customer service, though. I'm not saying kids. Yeah. Students are like... Kids. They're not kids. Of course they're kids. Desperate to win the business, Jane calls an old contact. You know Bradford City Football Club? We're doing a, a big recruitment drive for them at the moment, and it screams students. All right, cheers, thanks a lot. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. He's one of the senior lecturers for the business school, which the business school in Bradford is one of the best in the world. Uh, so he's now, he's asked me to email him what we want and he's going to send it to every student that's at the business school. See? In our design. <laughs> Watch Dross come through our door now. Have a like that. No! Good morning, Candelice people. 
I can't pay something that's not on the timesheet. Shut up, Carlos. Just shut up. The world of recruitment never stands still. Balls, 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 balls. Oh, balls. To earn their fees, the team need their candidates to get through the interview. They're saying you're different. They want you to be the happy bard like before, no moaning. If I'm giving you a job, I wouldn't give it to someone that's miserable. Working in recruitment is very pressurised and it can make you very ill. All right, one second. I need to drink this. It's paracetamol. Because the pressure is, every month you're at zero, and every month you've got a bill, and if we don't bill, we don't get one of them, which is our wage slips. If we don't get a wage slip, we don't pay our mortgage. So it can be very stressful, hence why we have a blood pressure machine in the office. Has it got batteries? Yeah, right, you ready? Now keep your hands stuck and don't, don't start moving and fanning around, just relax. Jesus Christ. Right. It's not even on. Shut up, it is on. Oh, I haven't got anything just to relax. do. It's going hard now. <laughs> It sounds like a vibrator. <laughs> it is going hard. <laughs> 125 over 86, that's all right. Yeah, you see, you just, you're just a drama queen. You have to go in, shine like a diamond. Hurt you? Yeah. Are you ready for a bit of hard graft? Yeah, I'm, a bit, I'm ready. Jane's used to all kinds of people coming into the agency looking for work. I'd like uh, everything work because uh, I'd like to improve my English language. But a 42-year-old Italian man with his auntie is a first. Take a seat. Yeah. Thank you. Would you like a coffee? No, no thanks. No? Thanks. You are Water. really, really kind. No, thanks. Oh, thanks. bless you. Ferruccio just arrived from Italy after losing his job in advertising. Hi. Please come with me. Sorry for my English. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Okay. I think you're good. Your uh, English is far better than my Italian. I think I know one word. I was there in the summer. I said prego a lot. I use it for everything. They seem to use it a lot. Prego. Mm. Right, OK. So talk to me about what's happening and why you're here at the moment. I'm here for improve my English. Yeah, OK. Uh, I'm looking for a job, everything job. OK. Allowed yeah. me this. OK. The sort of work I do is lots of marketing, yeah. sales, administration. Yeah. But because your English isn't there yet, mm -hmm. I think Carlos, who's my colleague that I mentioned yeah. to you, is going to be able to find you a job. He's obviously really willing to do anything, and we don't meet that many amazing walk-ins, people that come in where you think, wow, they're actually really clever, and we must be able to do something. I'm going to give you a suggestion. You can take it or leave it. If you want to come here and you want to meet people coming in, say, excuse me, you, can you take a seat? In the five... job centre? No, no, work here. Yeah. In yeah. here. And then like that, you can talk to me, you can talk to Jane, yeah. you can talk yeah. to everyone here. Yeah. Slowly your English will get better. Yeah. Okay. I knew that Carlos would help them because I knew Carlos would love him. I didn't expect him to end up at Candelisa, but, you know, that's kind of what happens in our office. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. She is special, right? She reminds me of my mum, she looks like my mum. If we can help, we will help. Carlos has sent 65-year-old Robert for a job as a delivery van driver. He needs the job after losing some of his pension fund. I think I'm perfectly employable. Uh, what is whether the employers think I am? Threshfield is a family-run catering supplier with 24 workers and an annual turnover of three million pounds. Pleased to meet you. Hi. Yeah. It's a physical job, and the two men Robert needs to convince are owner Mick and his right-hand man Simon. Have Candelita told you much about what we're looking for? Well, uh, the agency said it was a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, pocket that you were looking at. Uh, well, we, it was never a Monday, Tuesday. All right. So well, obviously that information's got misinterpreted. Yeah. We were looking for um, somebody that'd fill in Monday, Friday and Saturday, because Monday. those are our three busiest days of the week. I have to say it's a little bit different to selling, though. It's a bit more of a physical job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a physical guy anyway, as you'll probably see from your CV. Have you driven a big van before? Uh, I used to borrow the pickup from work at times to when I was moving things, but uh, that's about it. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, he seems a quite pleasant guy. 
If I'm going to have any concerns at all, it would be he is at retirement age and he's also not done a physical job before. Unsure about Robert's ability to cope with the physical side of the work, they agree to give him a trial to see if he's up to it. All right. Thanks again, Robert. Thanks again. Thank Cheers. you. See you later. Cheers. Bye. After Jane's call out to the students of Bradford, the agency has been inundated with inquiries. It'll be lots of customer service, lots of making sure that people are getting to the seats. It's just like five hours a day uh, for, while you're there at the match. Well, it's only a part-time job. It's working whenever there's a match day. College had just sent me an email saying, we've just identified two and a half thousand students that match your criteria. We're asking people to come into our office so we can interview you. What have I done? Hello, Candelisa. Carlos and Jane will have to wade through a host of CVs to find decent part-time workers. But it's Rachel who deals with the higher paid positions. She is after professionals who want a full-time job. I have to be really methodical, otherwise I'll miss jobs and I'll lose money. So I do look like I'm a bit of a control freak in my office, but if I'm not, you would not be able to do the job. Today, she's meeting 43-year-old Sharon, who's recently been made redundant. She's got a really steady CV, and I just don't get many people like that. Let's grab a seat. So, admin-wise, you've done admin reception. You can audio type. Yes. So you are great for most office jobs, really, customer services. When do you want to start work? Tomorrow. Now. Right, that's good. That's why I wanted to see you. <laughs> she can do everything within reason that an office person should be able to do. She is really flexible. So as a temp, she is perfect. Rachel tries to bag her client a job and in the process, get the agency a decent fee. Just to let you know, I've emailed you at Sharon's CV. You're not allowed to ask me that question, Mick. It's the Age Discrimination Act. But if you can, if I can tell you that, she has been working for about 25 years. Yeah, so 11 o'clock tomorrow. Bye. He's quite old school, is our client, so he just asked me how old she was. That was his first question. And loads of people ask it, and we can't tell them. Right, good news, you've got an interview on Wednesday morning with Mick at Rushfield. You have to take a punt on people sometimes. If they really want a job, and they're well presented, and they've got some skills, then if you need to fill a job, you, you may take a punt on somebody. I'll um, email you this afternoon. And get That'd that be super, thank you. Having convinced the company that her client is right for the role, it's now down to Sharon to get through the interview. It's 4 a.m. Hi, Robert, how are you? Fine, how are you? All right, you get up all right? Yeah, no problem. 65 year old Robert is starting his trial shift as a delivery driver for a local catering supplier. We'll take this to the van and we'll come back and get a potato. Yep, um, okay. This will be a completely different job for Robert, who previously held a sales position. Oh, shoot. That's brilliant, isn't it? This morning he will work an eight hour shift, make 10 drop offs, and get paid seven pounds an hour. One of these to the back of the van, if you're all right with that. Yep. Shop. Yeah, no problem. Okay. I have been approaching the pension age with that worry in mind, you know, how will I go on? Will I manage? We'll normally take the potatoes in and we'll put them away for them, just because they're quite heavy sacks. Yeah, okay. This isn't what I would have, shall we say, aimed for. It's an opportunity to reason, so I thought, well, we'll give it a try. Your naked butler slash still life drawing business. Yeah. How are you going to sell that as a positive? I know how to market myself. I know a little bit about selling sales. Rachel is trying to meet more professionals who are looking for jobs that will land the agency a fee. What do you know about football? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Do you follow football? Uh, no. Whilst Jane and Carlos are on the hunt for 20 stewards for the next Bradford City game. And today is interview. Who do you support? Uh, I support my new me. My new. Right. See, if you're going for an interview at Bradford City, I would say that I, I love Bradford City. <laughs> what do you know about football? Uh, fo football is a play 
who will play with foot, yeah. and the ball is therefore play. You're both pretty girls, <laughs> all right? You're gonna get some grief. Might be, way. show us your bazookas, or do you, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you feel about being put in a position like that? To play a game. No, no, <laughs> to be a steward. Take care, you too. After a busy day of interviews, Jane has one more person to see. Yeah, good evening. Take a seat. Do you want to drink okay. anything? Uh, no, thank you. All right, Sebastian is a music student who's never had a job before. Finding work in Bradford is very hard, uh, especially if you don't actually have much experience to begin with. You know, we all got to start somewhere. My dream job would be to uh, be a composer, performer, um, and family man. Take a seat just there. I'll grab you a glass of water, my lovely. So what do you want to be then when you've done your, um, your course? What do you want to do? I want to uh, perform my music. I have a thing about opera. Really? You like opera? Uh, yeah, I studied opera for a while. Give us a low note. Oh. God, that is low, isn't it? Mm. I felt that. <laughs> what have you applied for before? Um, I've applied for uh, jobs at Asda, uh, Wix, Ikea, even Lidl. And getting turned down by Lidl is a bit of a shot to pride. What do you think the job entails? Um, making sure everything's secure, people don't get into the pitch. Um, I hope that I will never, ever have to tackle a streaker. Um... <laughs> Jane's happy with Sebastian and puts him forward for a job, giving him his first break. He'll probably be very good and he'll probably be reliable. I liked him. I like someone who's a bit different. He's definitely different. His first paid job will be at the Bradford City match this weekend. See you in the morning! You in the morning. Bye. Bye! With the business struggling to make ends meet, Jane's working some late nights, cramming in more meetings with potential candidates. Bye. See you in the morning. She has a vacancy for a salesman at a multi-million pound Asian clothing company. Bombay stores have used for account staff before. We've never ever put retail staff in. And what we're hoping is we put the right person in, they like what we've put in, and then we get more business. Hiya, what will be a minute? Hello, hi. Take a seat, I'll hi. be one minute. Jane is meeting with father of one, Jimmy. Despite only ever having sold fried chicken, she is keen to give him a go. Got your CV, it screams at me KFC. So, yeah, because, so what, because, give because, me a bit of background about it. Because, because KFC has been a job that I've been doing for so long. Nothing wrong with KFC. I no, love, no, I love a big bucket. Been... <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's been out of work for a month. He's desperate to get a job to provide for his young son. Oh, how cute. Uh, when you start to write him, then your whole face just lit up. Is <laughs> he really cute? Yeah, because it's, lo it's lovely. It's lovely. Yeah. The company I'm thinking about sending you to is the biggest Asian retailer outside of London. They want to be able to see that you're good with customers and that you've got the ability to sell. To sell. So right. How does that sound? That sounds good. Sounds great. I give my best shot. All right, take right. care. See you. Bye, 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 bye. See you. <laughs> Jane contacts the client and vouches for Jimmy and his potential. It will be a big step up from selling fried chicken, but it's a chance for Jimmy to change direction and possibly start a new career. They might have 500 applicants and they'll look at you and go, right, she hasn't worked for three years, reject. Have you sent me your CV? Have you done any of that? Yeah. We could probably get it to about 9.45 an hour. It's a busy morning at the agency. So if someone comes in and they're saying they're looking for warehouse work, mm -hmm. so you say, uh, have you sent CV? And it's Ferruccio's first day. Yeah. If they say no, then you say, must send CV to email address. OK. Carlos and the team have taken him on in a work experience role to help him improve his English. To get your confidence up on the phone and speaking English. OK. The best way to do it is for me to ring you and you listen and have a conversation. Yeah. Well, hey, okay. You can do it, you can do it. Yeah. So go and sit over there yeah. and we'll have a go. Yeah. Okay, I will, I will try and speak slowly. Good afternoon, Candeliza people. I'm Ferruccio. How can I help you? I would like uh, to book some tents, please. 
Sorry, C could you repeat, please? I would like to book some temps. Okay, uh, have you got uh, a CV? No, I want to book some temps. To book some times. Temps. Temps. Some employees. Okay. I need men. Okay. Um, I'd like to to do speak with my colleague Carlos. In this moment, uh, uh, he isn't here. I need workers urgently. Okay. So please, will you get Carlos to ring me quickly? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Please. Hello. <laughs> One of Jane's candidates, Jimmy, is on his way to a trial at the UK's largest Asian department store. Selling Asian clothes is, it will be challenging, but that's even why I'm more excited about it, because it will be something new for me to do. Based in Bradford, Bombay Store's 100 employees generate an annual turnover of more than £100 million. Right, Jimmy, follow me through. Today, the man Jimmy needs to impress is manager, Qureshi. These are all unstitched suits. Mm -hmm. It's just showing you on the mannequins how they can be made up. But selling Asian goods is a world away from his previous job, selling family buckets at KFC. Have you ever sold anything like this in your time? Uh, no. I've sold right. a lot of chicken. <laughs> you sold more of chicken, not, not, not any fabric. As part of the trial, Jimmy will have to remember the names of various items of clothing in Urdu. These are all your shirvanis, all these. These are what they call pajamas. Pajamas. They want some kusas. Kusas mean these. Kusas. These phrases you will learn and I want you to have. Kumti. Kumti means come. Come means reduce the price. Okay. Yeah? So what are those called? Kusa. Kusas. Good boy. It's a bit scary. Right. Everything's been explained to you. The gentleman there looking for Shirwani. Okay. Go get him. Go get him, tiger. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Do you know what size you are? My size is 38. 38, 38, that's small, right? Yeah, small. Okay. And the other side, we've got Kusa as well? Yeah, Kusa also matching Kusa. You can match the colour. You got that one there? Yeah. Is there one. anything else? You want one of the... What do you, what do you call it this again? It looks like the local pimp. <laughs> I should say that, should I? <laughs> <laughs> this is what they use for bridal. This is the mini jacket. This is what you call for going to a wedding. This is when you're getting married, sir. So he can't, he can't have that? Well, no? not really, no. Why would he be carrying that, sir? No. Ask him if he's happy. OK, are you happy with that? Yeah. Can you carry on with the other? Yeah. Despite having to learn everything from scratch, Jimmy is impressed on his trial shift. Not bad, I think about six, seven hundred pounds. That's quite a decent sale. He could be the first black man to work in Bombay stores. The management at Bombay stores have agreed to put him on their roster for potential salesmen. So happy that made a good impression. And see you guys. So excited. How do you want that? Three sugars. How can you be so skinny and have three sugars? Today is a big day for Jane. Her company has supplied 20 new stewards for Bradford City FC. There's your coffee, my lovely. Thank you. If it goes well, this could be the start of a long-running contract. Bradford City would just be um, a maze ball experience for me to get Bradford City. Because, one, you know, we need to grow, so we need more clients, we need more business. And two, I would like to be in a position where all our eggs are not in one basket. The stewards are on a four-hour shift. You just want my follow up rest of your colleagues and go sit just out there for me, please. Their main role is crowd control and they'll earn £6.50 an hour. Hope you're all wrapped up nice and warm. I like the boots. Thank you. <laughs> for 20-year-old Sebastian, it's his first paid job. I've only brought the one glove as well. Um, but I made do. I've uh, kind of combined it into one uni glove. It's going to be a long day. There is an expected crowd of around 10,000, and it's the steward's job to make sure everyone finds their seat and behaves themselves. Oh, yeah, my apologies, sir. Um, Emma's right up there. If you just go through this vomitorium, keep heading down, and then go up. Uh, 
Oh yeah, my mistake. With Bradford City a goal down, it's important the stewards control the fans and ensure they remain seated. I'm afraid I have to ask you to sit down. That's okay. Thank you very much. This is not the easiest 26 quid I've earned. Um, obviously, there's a lot of standing around. My legs getting a bit tired, but at the same time, I'm enjoying the job. Any problems? Uh, oh, I only had to come scared, Cam. It can. Yeah, and uh, help a few people around their seats, but that was fine. Good man. This was a big opportunity for Jane to win the business at Bradford City. But have the new stewards impressed on their first day? The stewards I've received, um, it's a new thing to them, it's a new environment. Absolutely brilliant, you couldn't have wished for a better set of people, you know, to be put with. They all learn very quickly. They've done an excellent job today and I hope to see them back at the next match. I put the advert in that Metro um, newspaper for um, a lady friend companion. Let me have a look at your pictures um, then. The um, main thing is to find somebody who's uh, compatible. Let me just say something. That is a very handsome picture of you. It? However, uh, you're you in a graveyard. You can't put a picture of yourself in a graveyard. Robert has come into the agency after finishing his trial shift and Carlos has some good news. Robert's got the job and Carlos will get his fee. Hey, Carlos. Sorry for the wait, mate. You all right? It's okay. <laughs> nice to no see problem. you. No problem. Happy smiley face there. Hi. Okay. As far as Mick was concerned, yeah. the job is yours if you want it. He was happy with everything you do. Yeah. He knows you can do the job. As I see it, this the, can't move from this uh, Thursday, Friday stroke, Monday slot. But that's not for me. I really don't know where to go from here though um, because I know all my other clients right now they're all after oh no we need a full time out I'm really open to anything that apart uh, from uh, Friday Saturday Sunday yeah uh, from from 4.30 in the morning yes I am yeah it's frustrating for Carlos and it's back to the drawing board for Robert thank you for your time Carlos thank you cheers. take care Robert cheers see you later Rachel's candidate, Sharon, is hoping to impress at one of the agency's regular clients, Freshfield. As a perfect candidate, I hope she'll be well presented, well spoken, um, answer the questions I ask her very well. Owner Mick is in desperate need of someone who can help organise their office. Hello. Are you see Mick? Yes, I am. With Robert turning the driver's job down, the agency are keen that this time things work out. Thank Take you. a seat. Thank you very much. What are your strengths and your weaknesses? Um, I don't think I've got any weaknesses really. Um, but my That's strengths confident. are very, very confident. If you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? Um, my uh, dog, George. Why? Because he's very lovable. And when I get home today, he'll be looking out for me and just absolutely jump all over me and just makes your day, really. So why should we hire you? Because um, I'm good. <laughs> Give me a chance. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Thank you. We got on really well. We really felt confident in the end. Hello, is that Sharon? Hey. It's Rachel at Candelisa. Hi. Have you just got in? Yeah, about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. And how did it go? It went absolutely fantastic. He's offered you the job? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Wow, do you know something? I have never known Mick to offer anyone a job on the spot ever. No. Oh, that was easy. Well done. Bye. Excellent. Want to try answering the phone? Ferruccio's been at the agency for a week now, learning English. Call, call pick up. Call pick up. Good morning, Candelisa Hi. people. How can I help you? you uh, sorry, could you repeat? In this moment, it's busy. Can I help <coughs> her to ring her after? You're doing the right thing. Your number, please. Bye. 
Sorry. It funny. It's possible. Who was that? Uh, funny. If funny. Funny. Sorry. <laughs> it might. It might be funny. I'll be, I'll just, I will ask for Fanny. It might be. If it is Fanny, yeah. I apologise for laughing because there is such a name as Fanny, but it's, called, <laughs> it's quite funny. The word Fanny yeah. in English yeah. can mean... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is there any chance you could come and see me now? What would you like to actually do? Oh, I would like to play on the violin. <laughs> I just need you to fill this form for me. Carlos has been trying to fill several positions in factories. In 15 minutes, I might know, because I'm going to see the boss now. They are physical roles where the staff get their hands dirty. If I'm filling a position, I want to do my utmost best to get the right person in there first time. Put yourself as the manager. Why? would you give yourself the job? Yeah? It's a long way from the career that Jono would be interested in. So I'll send it over again. Give us a ring, say that you sent it. At 17, he is the agency's marketing executive. He has got such lovely writing that he does my board for me because I'm a nightmare. So I do have an important job, really. I mean... You could make that sound quite elaborate. It's a wide-ranging role with a number of challenges. I do things like the social media, so Facebook, Twitter, and I do our website. Should be head of marketing, really, because I'm the only person who does marketing, so, but never mind. He's doing so well, and he wanted to go more into the marketing side. And we said, right, the project we're going to give you is you've got to make a temps party happen. We want to say thanks to our temps. I'm handing him the whole event. I've said, there's the budget, do it. So I'm just now waiting to see what happens. We can't spend more than a grand. Yeah. Because it's basically coming out of the profits rather than a budget. Can I have a look at the invite? Yeah. Can you send an invite out? I'm like, where's the approval process gone? <laughs> I've just realised that I printed all these out. Oh, and there's a spelling mistake. No, not that, but I put free bar in it, which is not a free bar now. <gasps> it's plumbing not a free bar. I oh, know. So I'm going to have to change that. You can see you don't like it now, boy. No, I like it. Jane is embarrassing. She she kind of introduces me to people as like the baby of the team, the little apprentice. So it is a bit cringy, but I'm used to it. And the moral of that story is... Check with Jane, check with Jane. <laughs> He was told to uh, sort out his hygiene and if he comes to work tomorrow in the same state, that he'll just be sent home. Carlos failed to find Robert the right job. Are you still available? Well, I've just had uh, an opportunity come in. So Jane has now taken up the challenge. My only concern is it is full time. It's Monday to Friday for the next two months and I know you wanted part-time, so I'm really ringing to say, you know, would you consider doing it on a full-time basis? She wants to put him forward for a different kind of role. I just thought you'd be perfect for it. Yeah, definitely. All right, take care. Thanks ever so much, Rob. Cheers, bye. I can be a bit soft sometimes and I tend to adopt people because I'll see something in them and I really want to help them. And that's, sometimes it's worked out brilliantly for me and they've got a job and they've come back and thanked me. And sometimes it's bitten me on the backside. But, you know, everybody deserves a chance, don't they? Jane's persuaded Robert to go for an interview at Enable 2, a call centre in Bradford. When Jane described it to me yesterday, I thought, hmm, sounds interesting, that. That I've never even thought about anything like that. The company supplies interpreters to a variety of private and public sector clients. No worries. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. As their workload is increasing, they're looking for a new recruit to start as soon as possible. So just a um, quick introduction of ourselves, really. Yeah. I'm Yasmin, Yasmin Khan. I'm the service manager yeah. uh, at Enable2. And I'm the service development manager, so we work closely together. Right. 
Can you tell me what you understand by the term equal opportunities? And what I'm really interested in is what does it actually mean to you? It means that I get the same opportunity as you when you get the same opportunity as I do. Can you give me an example of when you'd apply it to this role? How can I apply it? Um, I don't actually look at... I never give you a thing. I, I, I just don't think about... I don't, I don't look at a person and judge them because they're different. Okay, yeah. I don't really know how else to answer that no, one. That, that's fine, Ross. What do you think uh, makes a good customer service? That you instill confidence in the person that you're talking to, that you are being totally honest with them. I've found that's, that kind of philosophy has served me well over the years. Anything else that you want to no, say? No, no. How do you think the interview went? Well, I'm hopeful. That's all I can say, I'm hopeful. <laughs> well, we won't keep you in suspense any longer. We would like to offer you the job. We're really impressed with your answers. Oh, and great. We think you'd be a real asset to the team. I'd really love a chance, yeah. Uh, great, that's great. Super duper, back into the land of the employed. <laughs> <laughs>
Never, never is blah, 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 blah. It's Ferruccio's last day at the agency. We're going to cry because we've been, you feel like you're part of us. I'm sad because now you are my family. Oh. I think he'll go back to Italy. I know he really misses us and then he'll come back and ask us for a job and we'll give him one. We'll have to sack somebody though, should we sack his place? <laughs> but Jane and the team couldn't let him go without a proper northern send off. This is my really bad head job. Wow. So. Candy, get down! <laughs> We've got you some little presents so you remember us. Oh, oh, flat. Yes, baby! <laughs> Anybody who walks through our door, they might have had an up, they might have had a down, but if we can help support them and get them back into work and help them change their life around, how good's that to actually be able to go home on a night and say, look what I've done? Oh, no! <laughs> That's not Yorkshire! Personally, inside, it makes you feel amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God bless. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you lot. <laughs>